In this video, we're going to do the review of this 160 watt ZK12KX that's 12 ampere or 160 watt step down converter with constant current, constant voltage. I'm going to explain the module, all the inputs and outputs. Under the digital magnifier, I'm going to look at each component and have where we look at the data sheet. Then I'm going to uh, test the accuracy of reading of voltage and current on the screen. Test it with 32 volts input and 24 volts, 18 volts, 12 volts. So, and then we will change the output with maximum currents and see the efficiency at every step. How to set the voltage and current to charge lithium battery, lithium ion, and lithium iron phosphate. We're going to look at the output ripple voltage and see how much ripple this one has. Hi, welcome to product review by Watt Hour. Let's get started with this. We're going to introduce the ZK12KX 12 ampere 160 watt back converter. This is a detailed video. If you want to escape to different section of the video, please use chapters. The larger screen, click on this area of the player so you can see all the chapters and then click to move to that section of the video. On your mobile device, you will see the menu. When you touch it, you see all the chapters and touch to move to that section of the video. Here are the main features. It has constant voltage, which means it keeps the voltage steady. And if you change the input voltage, the output will not change as long as you don't go below this voltage. Then it has constant current, CC, where you can use it it will keep the output current steady, especially for charging, that's very useful. And then it has LCD display, which makes it easy to read values. Soft start, it does not have that. And input voltage is 5.3 to 32 volts. Output voltage can be set between 1.2 to 32 volts. Output current is maximum of 12 ampere, but it says 8 ampere continuous, so we will see that. And then maximum output power is 160 watts. What current we can get with this module? For example, if you set the output voltage to 30 volts and they said output power is maximum 160, then 160 divided by 30 volts, we can get maximum of 5.3 ampere. And if you change the output voltage to, to 24 volts with 160 watts, if you divide it, you get 6.6 .6 ampere very important and if you change the output voltage to 15 volts if you divide 160 by 15 volt you will get 10.6 ampere maximum and if you have 12 volts and 160 if you divide it if you divide 160 by 12 volts you get 13.3 ampere which is above the limit so this will not work you have to do maximum of 12 ampere in this case 12 volts times 12 ampere we are getting 144 watts at 12 volts. And if you do 5 volts with 12 ampere, 5 times 12, we are getting 60 watts maximum at 5 volts, which we are going to test them all. Let me explain the buttons, inputs, and outputs. So these two terminals are input, and as you can see, it has been labeled here N negative and N positive. And this is the output, positive and negative. I have here two LEDs. One is out, that will be turned on when output is on, and then CC, constant current, this LED will be turned on. We have these two potentiometers. One is for CC, constant current, where you set the current limit, and the other one is constant voltage, where you set the voltage. These two buttons are to change the input-output view, and this is for on-off. Uh, setting. And here's a package. When you purchase it, they will send you something like this. And we have this module inside the bubble wrap. We have this instruction manual. They send also a diode, a heat sink, this very powerful diode. Provided this diode, when you're charging battery, this will just prevent the voltage coming back from the 
battery to this. Let's all the hardware that is sent. To assemble this, just remove this these sheets. To prepare this, we need to insert four of these from the top and then put these standoff from the bottom. Let's remove this plastic covering from this. Let's now put this first here, remove the adhesive covering. and then put it here now let's put the caps and then put this sheet make sure that it passes through this there's four screws here And then let's put this here. That's done. And now let's have a look at the components one by one and see what they are. Let's start from this side. As you can see, this is LM358, it is an operational amplifier. Let's have a look at this microcontroller. And this is N76E003AT from New Voton. And here is a data sheet for N76A003. Let's have a look at this chip. And this is from Holtec HT. 1621B and here's the data sheet for HT1621 that is a RAM mapping 32 by 4 LCD controller which controls this LCD. Let's have a look at this piece and this is NCE4060 and here's the data sheet for NCE4060K this is N channel enhancement mode MOSFET with this drain current of 60 ampere and the voltage is 40 volts. Uh, let's have a look at these two in here. As you can see, this is also NCA4060K and this is the same. So these two must be parallel because this is drain and this pin is the drain. So you can see the drain of this is connected directly to the drain of the other one and this is now in parallel and this is source and it has been connected from the other side to this source. Look at these two in here and as you can see this is also NCE4060K, 4060K. You can see this pin is connected from the path to this so this is in parallel and the drain is also connected. These are all power MOSFETs and that's why we need heatsink here to dissipate the heat. Let's have a look at this chip and as you can see this is LTC 1625. This is from analog device LTC 1625 high efficiency step down converter and we have small com other components like this Schottky diode here and then we have small diode here and one other component let's have a look at this this is d882 
And here is the data sheet for NPN silicon A22 transistor. And that was the major components of semiconductors on this module. Now let me explain the buttons, inputs, and outputs. So these two terminals are input. And as you can see, it has been labeled here N negative and N positive. And this is the output, positive and negative. We have here two LEDs. One is out, that will be turned on when output is on, and then CC, constant current, this LED will be turned on. We have these two potentiometers. One is for CC, constant current, where you set the current limit, and the other one is constant voltage, where you set the voltage. Set the voltage with this CV, constant voltage and constant current. When you set a constant current, whatever value you set, when the current reaches at that value, this LED, the CC, will turn on and will bring down the voltage so the current is constant. Keep it at that level. Now, which, when you press it, it changes the input and output. Now, this is the output voltage, 14.6 volts. And if I press it again, it shows the input voltage. If I press and hold uh, for about two seconds, you see, now it shows the output current, whatever current we have, it will be displayed. If I press and hold and release, it shows the power. This is also for the output. So we cannot see input current. This is just for the output. For the input, we just see the input voltage from this. Now, this button, if you press and hold it for a few seconds and release, you see it says off. What it means is that right now you see the output is on. Now if I disconnect the power, so this is turned off. Now if I connect it, the output is off. And you have to press this to turn it on. And press this to turn it off. And if I press and hold this, as you can see, it says on. So now what it means is that now if I disconnect it, if I connect it again, you will see the output is automatically on. So you can set it when the power is disconnected. What should it do? Either turn on automatically or not. But in any case, when it is on, you can turn it off or you can turn it on with this. And let me show you my setup. Input is passing through this 100 ampere shunt resistor where we can see the voltage and current. And here it has been connected to the input and then output is connected to my electronic load. Here is my setup. We see input current in here, input voltage. This display doesn't matter because we see the output voltage, output current and power in here. This is Rigel 3031 electronic load. This output is connected to this electronic load. Now let's see the reading accuracy of voltage and current uh, for this module. And as you can see, input voltage is now 19.88 and we are reading 19.84. So 40 millivolts difference here. You can see now the voltage is exactly 20 volts of one. We are reading 19.97. So Acceptable, it's very close. Now input voltage is 30 volts, and we are reading 29.99, very accurate. Seven volts, and we are reading exactly seven volts, 6.99, very accurate. Now input voltage is 5.2 volts, and we are reading 5.2, 5.19, very accurate. So input reading voltage is very accurate. Now let's check the output voltage. I'm pressing this button to switch it to output and here now output says 5.18 and we are reading 5.16 so that is 180 millivolts that's 160 so 20 millivolts discrepancy what we can get what is the maximum output that we can get with 32 volts maximum voltage is, is displayed to be 32 and that's the maximum when I rotate it it doesn't go but logically speaking this should not be the case it should be a little lower but because we don't have load so it's not matter now let's go for 
24 volts. Now output is set to 24.3 volts. And as you can see, we are reading 28.87. I've set it to exactly 15 volts. And we are reading that is 920, 80 millivolts more. So this shows extra voltage. Now I've set it to exactly 5 volts. And we are reading 20 millivolts less. I'm rotating it counterclockwise like that. So minimum is 1.21 volts. Now let's see how we can charge a battery. For charging a battery, a lithium battery, first we have to know that the maximum charge voltage for the battery and maximum charge current. Otherwise, you are going to damage the battery. Lithium ion battery, the voltage is 4.2 volts. That's the charge voltage, but the nominal voltage is 3.7 volts. The same thing for the lithium iron phosphate. The charge voltage is 3.65 volts, but the nominal voltage is 3.2 volts. So people call it 3.2 volts. Here's the data sheet. You're getting the information from this data sheet. For example, this is for Panasonic NCR18650B. And here the charge voltage is 4.2 volts and maximum charge current is 1625 mA or 1.62 ampere. That's the maximum. Here for the battery that I've just shown you, the voltage is 4.2 and the current is 1.6. That's the maximum. Uh, let's set the voltage. 4.2 volts so I've set the voltage to 4.2 volts then for the current let's just short circuit it it's dropped and the current is 6 ampere so we will rotate this potentiometer here counterclockwise until we see 1.6 So I set the current to 1.6. Now disconnect this. The voltage is 4.2 volts and here is my battery. I will connect the positive to the positive and negative to the negative. As soon as I connect it, you will see that the, the voltage is now instead of 4.2, it is 3.53 volts, but the current is 1.6. So that's very important. Otherwise, the battery will get damaged. And because we have constant current, the red LED is on. This will, as the current, as the current pours into the battery and the battery is filled up, the voltage will slowly go high. When it is full, the voltage will be 4.2 volts. And that is when the current will be zero. So the battery will be charged. Now let's see how we can charge four of these because these are connected in series. The positive of one is connected to the negative and so forth. So this is in series and then we have two terminals here. Because it is 4.2 volts times 4, 16.8 volt is the voltage for this. So the voltage is now 16.8 and, and the current is already set to 1.6 ampere. So positive to the positive and negative to the negative. As you can see, the current is 1.2 ampere because the voltage is very high, 16.8. As the battery is filled up, the voltage will increase and at 16.8 it will be zero. It's almost now full, very close. It's almost now full, very close. As you can see, it's being reduced. You're charging the battery when the charger is turned off. If there is no power, the voltage will, or power will go back to the device. To protect it, they provided larger diodes, something like this. So you have to put a diode between the positive and this uh, battery will come to anode and this line is cathode now the voltage will pass but from this way it doesn't allow 
that will block it. I connect it, as you can see, the voltage goes through this diode to the battery, like that. But here, but here is a problem. This diode has voltage drop across it, voltage across the battery. And as you can see, it shows 3.4 volts. Check the voltage across the diode. As you can see, 0 0.75, let me, 0 0.75 volts is being dropped. Now, 4.2 plus 0 0.75. So we have to set this to 4.95 volts. Set it to 4.95 or 4.96. So now if I connect this, now you see that we are charging it at 1.6. Compensate or add the voltage that is dropped across this on the charge voltage. Now let me show you charging lithium iron phosphate. This is huge battery each 100 ampere hour and if you charge it one ampere per hour it will take 400 hours and if you charge it 10 ampere just calculate it will be 40 hours before it is charged but this is just an example your battery might be small so one cell of this is 3.65 volts if you want to just charge one of them just set this to 3.65 volts and the maximum current that this can be charged is 20 ampere so this can never be able to do that uh, you can set it let's say 6 ampere or 9 ampere and charge it as long as you don't go above the limit that's okay and if you want to charge four of these then the voltage will be 3.65 times 4 that's 14.6 volts now it is 14.6 volts let's set the current to maximum until you hear the clicks now I can hear clicks, like negative to negative, making sure that, and then positive to positive. And as you can see, so we are charging at 10.62 ampere, and the voltage, instead of for four cell, which is 14.6 volts, at the moment, as you can see, this is a little red, so the voltage has been dropped, and the current is 10. When these batteries filled up, the capacity will fill up, the voltage slowly increases and it, when it reaches 14.6 volts, the current will be zero and battery is fully charged. As I prepare it for the test, please don't forget to subscribe. Now I've set output to 30 volts, input is 32 volts and as you can see, we are reading some incorrect value. Let's fix that. So output is now 30 volts. And let's go, if you divide 160 divided by 30, 5.3 ampere we can get. Let's go 5.3, turn it on. And as you can see, it says OPP, over power protection. I've set it to the maximum, we cannot get 5.3. We turn it off, and now I have to disconnect it and connect it again. So let's go 5.2. Now at 5.2, let me turn it on. So 5.2 can work. And you can read the input current here, 4.98, and output is 5.2. This is very close value. And we are reading also output current here at 5.26. We can change the input by holding the button. And it shows the power. Now 158.6 watt based on that calculation and 155 is the output and here is the efficiency now input is 32 
Output is 24 volts, divide 160 by 24, we are supposed to be getting 6.6 .6 ampere. Let's try it. I'm turning it on. So we are getting now, this is the output power. I can change it. And input current is 5 ampere at 32 volts. And this is multiplying these two will get you the... And output power is 155 watts. And here is the efficiency. Now I've set output to 18 volts, input is 32 volts, and 160 divided by 18 volts, 8.8 .8 ampere. Let's put it at 8.7, and I turned it on. OPP, over power protection, so it did not work. Now I set it to 8.6 and input current is 5.1 ampere. Output is 155 watts. And here is the efficiency. Now I set output to 12 volts. 160 divided by 12 is 13 ampere, which is above the limit. Now let's just set it to 12 amp. Just turned it on with 12 amp. And as you can see, it's just at the edge. It's just flickering and constant current is turned on. And we are not getting that value. So let's go 11.9. I just changed it to 11.9. Did not work. Let's go 11.8 did not work, 11 11.7, 11 11.6, 11.5, 11.4. Let me disconnect it and connect it again. So 11.4 does not work. Let's go 10.5. Now I set it to 10.5. 10.5 also did not work. We are at the maximum. Now 9.5. Again, did not work. Now I set it to 9 ampere. So we are getting 9. And the voltage has dropped a little. But if we accept this, then we are getting at 12 volts output, we are getting only 9 ampere. Well, this is drawing 9 ampere. So I'm using this thermal camera. Uh, this spot is 53 degrees, my finger. And here, that's the hot spot. And let's turn it around and look at this side. The hot spot is this wire in this area and 37 degrees in here. And the edge, 60 degrees in here. So the actual chips are the hottest now. 60 degrees is normal. Now I've set the output to 7.3 volts, so it can handle 9 ampere. The voltage dropped a little. Now output is 5 volts, input 32. Let's go with 9 ampere. As you can see, the voltage has dropped 8.6. I've already used the voltage sensing, so the voltage is read properly, but this is dropping. As you can see, it's around 130 millivolts drop, but we are able to get 9 ampere. Voltage of 24 volts. Output of, I set it to 18 volts. Let's go with 12 ampere. 
and as you can see constant current kicked in and it will not allow it and even 11.5, 11.4 11 ampere we are not able to get 11 ampere 10 So as you can see, it went to overpower protection. I'm going 7.5. So 7.5 we can get at 18 volts, 18.2. And input current is 5.8 ampere at 24 volts. Output is 135.3 watts. And here is the efficiency. Now I set output to 12 volts, input is 24 volts. Let's go with 7.5 ampere. So we are getting 12 volts. The voltage has dropped even though I have voltage sensing activated. Let me increase the current 7.6, 7.7. .7. Seven point eight, seven point nine, and you see input current is also increasing. Eight. So now it's eight ampere. Eight point one two three. I just jumped. Eight point four five, six. Eight point eight, seven eight. Eight point nine. We are getting now 9 ampere. Let me turn it off. Disconnect the load and connect it to C. So 9 ampere, 12 volts. We are getting. Input current is 4.75 with 24 volts. And output is 107 watts. And here is the efficiency. Our output is set to 5 volts. Let's go with 9 amp. We are getting 9 ampere with a little drop here, almost 90 millivolts. And 44.2 watt is the output power. And here is the efficiency. Now output is 3.3 volts. Let's go with 9 ampere. 9 ampere, we are getting 3.3 volts. This has dropped a little. It's almost 140 millivolts drop. 28.5 watt is the output. 1.41 ampere is at the input with 24 volts. And here is the efficiency. Now I've started new input voltage, 16 volts, lithium iron phosphate, 3.2 volts times 5. I set the first lower voltage, 12 volts. Let's go with 9 ampere. And input is 7.17. .7. Let's go 10 ampere. So we are getting 10 ampere. Let's go 11, constant current kicked in, make it 10, worked. Input current is 8 ampere with 15 volts, with 16 volts. Output is 119 watts and here is the efficiency. Now I set output to 5 volts, let's go with 10 ampere. Input current is 3.4 with 16 volts, 10 ampere, 48.58 watts at the output, and here is the efficiency. Let's go with 
Now output is 3.3 .3 volts. Let's go with 10 ampere. The input is 2.33 with 16 volts. Output is 10 ampere, 31.3 watts. And here is the efficiency. Now input is 12 volts, output is 6.4 volts. If you see 3.2 volts lithium iron phosphate times 2, 6.4 volts. And let's go with 10 ampere. We are getting 10 ampere here. If I go 11, it doesn't work. So 10 ampere is the maximum. The input current is 5.8 ampere at 12 volts. Output is 62.6 .6 watts at 10 ampere. And here is the efficiency. Now at 12 volts input, output is 3.3 .3 volts. Let's go with 10 ampere. Input is 3.13 ampere at 12 volts. Output is 10 ampere or 31.55 watts. And here is the efficiency. Now let's have a look at the ripples. I've connected oscilloscope at the output. Let's go with 10 ampere, 3.3 volts. Here as you can see the ripple is 58 millivolts at 10 ampere at this 3.3 volts. Let's go with 1 ampere and as you can see the ripple has been reduced to 44.4 millivolts. Switching frequency is 71.4 kilohertz at 10 ampere. Let's make it 1 amp. And as you can see, it has changed. Switching frequency has changed to 35.2 kilohertz. Now input is 32 volts. And output is 12 at 1 ampere. Ripple is 40 millivolts. Now it is 9 ampere. 9 ampere ripple is 64 millivolts. Frequency is 147 kilohertz. Put 32 volts. And output is 24 volts at 6 ampere. And you can see it's 45 millivolts peak to peak is the ripple. For conclusion that I will say under no circumstance I was able to get 12 ampere but 10 ampere and lower we were able to get and depending on the power and voltage setting you cannot get for example at 18 volts or uh, 12 volts you cannot get 160 watt because the amount of power also depends on the current so the current cannot be greater than 12 ampere at the output or 160 watts but uh, up to 10 ampere it, it works very well in majority of the voltages the constant current is a great feature that you can charge batteries display is also very useful that you can see voltage uh, input voltage output voltage and also output current and power i have no affiliation with them uh, and this was an honest review definitely i recommend this because the casing is also protecting it. This is nice product. Thank you for watching. This was a full review of this module. If you learned something and found this useful, please thumb up as this will help my video. And also, if you have comment or question, please post it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. In this video, we are going to do the review of this 50 volts, 20 ampere, Wurgi, WZ5020L back converter 20 ampere or 1 kilowatt we're going to test it with different voltages up to 55 volts at the input and up to 20 ampere it needs more current so the constant current is uh, turned on but we are not worried input current 